Hi, this is Wayne Rivers at the Family Business Institute. Thanks for tuning in to this week's blog. Let's have your comments below. Future topics, perhaps, would be a nice thing. And, uh, and uh, this week we want to talk about conflict. And we want to talk about the frequency of conflict in family businesses. So l let me just put you at ease. First of all, uh, conflict is the rule. It is not the exception in family businesses. So if you're experiencing conflict in your family or in your business or both, you know, don't feel bad. Uh, well, don't feel any worse than necessary, I should say. It, it always feels bad when you have conflict. Um, but don't feel like you're alone. You're not. And, and there was some research that came out of our trade association, the Family Firm Institute, in 2009. And I have no reason to believe that this research is, is anything but fresh in the sense of what we're seeing among family businesses today. So how often is conflict then among family businesses? Well, in this survey, 20% reported they had conflict every week. Another 20% said they had conflict on a monthly basis. About 40% said that they had conflict three or four times a year. So that's about 82% if you look at the survey. What conclusion can we draw about the other 18% of family businesses? Well, they're lying. <laughs> they have conflict. You know, perhaps they weren't willing to disclose that to these researchers, but come on, they have conflict. How, do you, how can you live life? How can you be in a family and not experience conflict? And then you, you add the complications of a business to that, please. There is definitely conflict in, those, in that 18%. So don't, you know, surveys are terrific for what they are, but you can't always believe every, you know, the, the, you can't ever believe it's gospel, okay? So, now how do they report in the survey that they resolved the conflict? Well, a proportion said, we just leave it up to the senior generation. So think about this for a minute. You've got 70-year-old mom and dad, and you've got 40-year-old um, you know, siblings in a business. Adults, right? They run their own households, they're married, they have kids, they're responsible human beings. They have a conflict in the, in the context of the family business, and they go to mom and dad. Are you kidding me? Adults? who should be engaging with each other as peers, go to mom and dad as children and say, oh, can you solve this problem? What if mom and dad aren't around anymore? What if mom and dad spend the whole winter in Florida? I mean, you know, what if mom and dad are past their ability to reason effectively anymore because of age? Seriously? Another group said when they had conflict in the business, they avoid it. Well, we all avoid conflict. None of us, unless we're drama kings or queens, none of us want conflict. We don't seek it out necessarily, but it's there. And avoiding is the worst thing you can do. You know, deciding not to decide is still a decision. Avoiding doesn't help in any way whatsoever. And then another cohort said, well, they talk it through, which is what absolutely you have to do. I mean, you have to roll up your sleeves and be big boys and girls, and, and you've got you've to figure out a way to muddle through that. It's just, it's a fact of life, and to avoid it or to let mommy and daddy uh, take care of it, are just that's just sticking your head in the sand. You know, in any business, family or not, we learn conflict resolution from our families of origin. So in my family of origin, it was usually, you know, yelling and, you know, the threat of violence. Well, that's probably not something you want to bring to the workplace. But that's typical of people that grew up in the 50s and 60s, I think, in terms of the way their parents handled things. So if you think about an, an employment arrangement, you know, you've got 30 people in your office or 300 people in your office. Every one of us brings our conflict resolution techniques from our families of origin. So you've got this polyglot of people <laughs> with all these different techniques for resolving conflict, some from you know, very hierarchical and, and threatening even, to some where they, you know, they, they avoid conflict altogether and they're very, uh, you know, they're very afraid of it. So somehow in our organizations, we have to figure out a way to come up with a conflict resolution methodology. Otherwise, these things just go unresolved forever. And obviously, there's a business and a human cost to that. So what do you do? All right, a few things. Uh, first thing is self-awareness. That's, that's the first element of leadership, self-awareness. You know, if you know yourself, you know that you are, you are strong in certain ways and that you also have weaknesses and blind spots. So the best way to become self-aware is to start to take psychometric, psychological type of Colby, Myers, Briggs, DISC, all those things, and learn what you, your strengths finders, you know, what are you strong at versus not so strong at. There's, there's dozens and dozens of you know, self-help kind of things on the web now that you can do. But once you know yourself, then you go to step two, and that's team awareness. 
So on your team, you've got this group of Myers-Briggs types or this, this, this selection of disc types. Well, once you know that and you get a little bit of uh, uh, counseling and coaching on those things, then you, you, you know the team. And the idea with knowing your team really well is the platinum rule. So we all learned the golden rule when we were kids. The platinum rule, which I think is a better rule for the workplace, is you, you treat people how they want to be treated, not how you want to be treated because you're unique and you have different wishes and needs, well, so do the other people. So if I know that the other people on my team want X, Y, or Z, why is it beyond my power reasonably to, to give that to them? If I know their types via this psychometric stuff, then why wouldn't I go ahead and, in most instances, try to give them that which they want versus the way that I perceive things or receive information or push out information? Uh, the third thing is a coherent common vision for the company. You know, if you have that, it makes, it makes conflict go away in the sense that when you attract new people to the team, they can, they can clearly aim for that same vision. And right away, if you've got people that share your vision for where the company is headed, you've eliminated one great source of conflict, and that is different visions. I want to be a $50 million company, but she wants to be a $100 million company. There's really no way to resolve that. Uh, either way, somebody's going to find themselves unhappy. So if we have a common vision for where we're going, you take away one big source of conflict in family businesses right away. Today's people want to be pulled, not pushed. Command and control, top down, the military style of, of leadership is not as successful as it once was. Today's young people, today's middle-aged people even, would much rather be pulled in a certain direction. And that's what vision allows you to do. It gives you the ability to pull versus you know, push and kick people in the shins and be that kind of a leader. And then finally, professionalize your organization. You saw my blog a few weeks ago about the magic bullet. Look, strategic business planning just works. Vision, mission, values, having a strategic plan, having a budget, having really clear roles and responsibilities across the board for your people. Doing all those things removes so many sources of potential conflict, and it just kind of withers on the vine. So please take our advice. If you have conflict, deal with it professionalize the business. This is Wayne Rivers at the Family Business Institute. Thank you.